Hey folks, welcome to This Week in History with Mike and Will. I'm Mike. I'm Will. And uh, it's This Week in History. What we do is we uh, pick an event from history that happened on this week, mm. sometime in the past. Will researches it and then tells me about it. He's got one hour to tell me about it. This many. Let's see if he gets it in under time this time. Maybe. Last time was a little over. Mm. The time before that. And the time before that. If you're uh, watching now, you can see how long the video is. You know already if he made it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been under time. I've been... So take that with it however so, you want. So, <laughs> we're discussing today... What are we discussing? Cleopatra the Seventh. Cleopatra the Seventh. What uh, a, Specifically, uh, this is the day she makes Caesarian her heir. That's, I just wanted an excuse to talk about Cleopatra. All right. I to talk about Sounds that. good. Sounds good. Ready? Ready. Uh, okay. Cleopatra the Seventh, called Philopator. Philopator Ooh. is a fancy Greek word that means father-loving. So unlike almost, not like that, almost like every person we've talked about in history like stabs their father in the back, yeah. Cleopatra did not. That's all it takes to that's show a your big, love? Well, because she went to bat for him. Okay. And that's a big deal because usually if you were on rival sides of like factions during a civil war, you end up dead, especially if you're the kids. Oh, yeah. She backed her dad. And I don't know why that's just her title because it should be way cooler, but that's still a really nice title, especially yeah. since this is the Cleopatra that everybody knows about. This is the famous, uh, was the lover of Julius Caesar, was the lover of uh, Mark Antony. Was it uh, Elizabeth Taylor. Was Elizabeth <laughs> Taylor, um, famed for her astounding beauty and charm, usually reviled as a poisoner and a manipulator. Mm -hmm. We're going to suss some of that stuff out. See what's real, what's true. Was yeah. she bitten by a snake to commit suicide and all mm -hmm. that jazz like we see in the movies and in the plays and all this stuff. So we're going to talk about some of the myths. I've never seen a movie about her. No? I've never seen a play. She was in Rome, though. The show, which the, you watched. In the second season. She was in the first season for Barely. a little bit. Yep, I saw that much. Yep. <laughs> okay, so that's a pretty close estimation of who she was. Okay. Very smart. And I know the song Walk Like an Egyptian by yep. the Bangles. Yep, and I'm not sure that that's a really good... No. Because <laughs> I don't think they walked. Just telling you my, like my, my knowledge of Egypt. So here's what we're going to do. is We're going to explain that Cleopatra was not, in fact, Egyptian. She is Greek. Oh, good thing I didn't. <laughs> wasn't drinking coffee. <laughs> Spitzhaka. Wipe off the camera. Uh, no, she is part of the Ptolemaic dynasty. Mm. The Ptolemies. The Ptolemy. The Ptolemies. Ptolemy, yeah. It's a silent pt. It's actually just pronounced Olivy. Olivy. It's a, like a double negative. Two oh. consonants touching cancel each other out. <laughs> okay. uh, if it's at the start of a sentence. That is, none of that is <laughs> right. That's not even true. But it's like mnemonic. Sure. That's not right. <laughs> it's because it's like M, N, E, N, whatever. Anyway, Ptolemy. So yes. the Ptolemy the first Soter, uh, he was a general and what was called the, a companion of Alexander the Great. Oh. I think we've heard of this guy. We have. Kind of a big deal. Macedonian fella led an army out of a... Uh, Macedon took his father's concept of how to make a, a formidable fighting force of professional soldiers and basically conquered a huge chunk of the known world. Pressing he was east, great. south. He was, he was pretty great. Uh, the companions were his seven close bodyguards and generals. Okay. These were the guys who kept him alive, kept him safe. And it was difficult to do because he was a raving lunatic in battle. Sometimes he would just charge right in to inspire his men, and then those guys had to go, oh, crap, and chase after him. <laughs> the concept of the companion was created by Philip of Macedon, Alexander's dad, okay. and it was supposed to be like a bodyguard of cavalry who followed him around. Okay. And then Alexander kind of expounded on that and said, well, I can really trust these guys, so I should give them important positions Oh. of leadership, so they commanded like wings of battle uh, and different units of stuff. He right. could just rely on them. And it was a very remarkable thing in that they never stabbed him in the back. That's pretty cool. However, when Alexander died, they all basically said, I want this chunk of the empire. I should run things for him. His heir sucks because <laughs> he's a baby. And the lineage is maybe kind of muddy because we're not really sure who should be running things. Yes, so they were loyal um, to Alexander. They were loyal to Alexander. Well, that was it. That was it. <laughs> and once the man died, when he was still really young, he, yeah. was like in his, he was in his 30s, he didn't have time to really fulfill his plans for like settling. He was right. an amazing conqueror and actually a surprisingly good administrator, but did not live long enough 
to solidify his empire. So it fragmented right away. Um, so you have like Greece is its own thing, then Egypt becomes its own thing. Um, Afghanistan, like parts of Afghanistan and India were actually Greek oh. until like the year zero. They were, they were Greek for a really, really, really long time. Like, for like 300 years right. after Alexander, his legacy remained. Uh, and then, and then they the were year like, zero calendar was cheaper. Yep. Because they could, they could use the ones from last year. Yep. And just start going backwards. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. From then on. Well, there wasn't a zero. It was just one. No, one calendar, one. no calendars available that yep, year. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Yeah, we don't have calendars. Yeah. The, zero, the year zero actually did exist. Just nobody talks about nope. it. <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> but no, it goes from minus one to plus one, mm -hmm. which is... For mathematicians, it's like, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah. But for historians, we're like, no, no, that's right. It's a leap year. <laughs> sure. It's a wee leap right over it. Uh, anyway, so Ptolemy is the guy who ends up running what is Egypt nowadays. All right. This can, includes, like, Cyprus. It includes uh, Judea, which is, like, where Jerusalem is and the area around it. Um he owns a big chunk of land. And at this time, Egypt is considered like a breadbasket because the area around the Nile uh, River, super fertile. Like enough grain to supply... A fertile crescent. Yes. Like, yeah, because I think that goes from, like, Egypt to Baghdad. There's this chunk. Just a thing I heard no, of. That's a thing. Uh, I'm going to write it down. <laughs> but yeah, so, like, if you owned, like, where Baghdad is, that's super fertile. Although now it's not as fertile. But it was super fertile because there's the Tigris and Euphrates rivers meat there so there was tons of food and water yeah. uh, and then the Nile holy moly tons of food and water but then there's True. like lots of desert right nearby so it's kind of weird how it goes from right next door it's <laughs> yeah. awful and then as far as crops and animals and everything the Nile also goes out into the Mediterranean so it's a good port too yep amazing port and that's where Alexandria was built boom one of like 16 Alexander he had a bit of an ego Alexander if he <laughs> made a new city it was always Alexandria <laughs> uh, so uh, unlike today where Cairo is the capital Alexandria is the capital hmm? which I think is right about where Cairo is but okay. if you go back in time they don't call it that Cairo I think was like a small town I would have to do some studying on Cairo I have not I have studied Alexandria let us know in the comments if you know about if you know <laughs> when a became Cairo instead of Alexandria information <laughs> my stuff is Roman that era okay. so this is what I've studied they're like it's not mentioned they don't care about it um, they don't care bro <laughs> it's kind of, uh, I'm gonna show them. anyway probably so works better in written down it works way better <laughs> written down <laughs> It's way better written mm -hmm. down. <laughs> anyway, so Ptolemy uh, creates a dynasty. Now, when he takes over, all the leaders from then on speak Greek. All of them. Except one. And we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, and he takes on some of uh, their historical things that they would do, which is uh, a big one was the brother would marry the sister. They wouldn't have kids. Like, it wasn't a sexual partnership. It was a co-ruler. <coughs> Ah. So it's kind of like what the original traditional concept of marriage is like a union of properties. Okay. It was to secure family legacy and, and bloodline and all that jazz of who controls it rather than saying um, my daughter inherits or my son inherits. Both my eldest children inherit uh, of each gender and therefore that's who runs the thing. Okay. That was the concept. Weird, but all right. Weird. I'll let it yeah, go. Yeah, weird, but not like, it's not, <laughs> like, it's it. not like Game of Thrones, the Targaryens, and they're, you know, intermingling. Sure. There was some of that stuff that happened later. Uh, Ptolemy hated this. He thought it was stupid. But. <laughs> stupid. He's like, this is dumb. Like, I'm the king. Everybody knows I'm the king, but fine. Uh, we'll make this a thing. And it uh, got more accepted by his dynasty going on that you know, this is just the way it is but he was smart he was very smart and knew that this would make it more acceptable for his rulership okay rather than call himself a king he referred to himself as a pharaoh uh, he tied himself to their religious orders rather than Greek religious orders so while it is considered a uh, Hellenic rulership which is like Greece Hellenic coming from Helen of Troy mm -hmm. the beauty of the Hellenic okay the Hellenic League and all that jazz uh Basically means it's Greek. Uh, he was still an accepted Egyptian leader over time because he wasn't like a cruel, monstrous tyrant. Some of his descendants were. No. So we're going to get a little into that. So fast forward. So he was born in, just to let you know the gap here, he was born in 367 B.C. He died in 282 B.C., which means he was like 85 years old. 
Um, That's an old dude. Yeah. By B- any standards. And also BC math throws me off. Yeah, because you have to add. Yeah. You have to you have to yeah. reverse it and then subtract. It's I weird. choose to believe you. Yep. So he died in his eighties. He died in his eighties, oh. which is wild. And this guy was a campaigner and a warrior. This was not some you know. So he was fit. That's probably part of it. A lot of the guys who end up fit is if you made it through all the battles relatively unscathed, you could live a really long time because your body's like, I'm used to that. <laughs> I've been stabbed and whatever. I got all my working parts, though. My body's used to <laughs> hardship. Everything's fine. Meh. Because, you know, this is before we have, like, yeah, toxic fumes and burn pits and gross stuff that make soldiers decay over time. It's just we're marching around in our right, right. Fit, strong, do that. Or uh, just exercising all the time. Yeah, you basically, <laughs> you're just constantly... I mean, you're always marching or riding. So that's constant, a, constantly a workout. Um, so yeah, he's very fit, very healthy, lived a really long life, had a bunch of kids. Uh, and then we fast forward to 69 BC. Nice. Uh, that is the birth of Cleopatra. Oh. She was born in 69 BC. Uh, she was born in, of course, Alexandria. Because mm-hmm. that's where all the kings stayed there. Two... Ptolemy the twelfth. There were a lot of Ptolemies. <laughs> I've lost track. There's going to be two more. Okay. This is um. I gotta get his, his title right. Uh, cause cause it's pretty awesome. Uh, Ptolemy Auletes, A U L E T E S, which means the flautist. He apparently during uh, all of their rituals to Dionysus, the Greek god of basically partying, he would play the flute mm. for people. Like, he'd have these big parties, and he'd play the flute. And he was really good at it. So that's his claim to fame, is he was the flautist. Nice. (laughs) Um, Now, he was born in uh, 117 BC. Okay. So he's (laughs) hard, almost 50 when she's born. Okay. So he's sowing his wild oats well into later in life for a guy at this time. They could be just regular oats. Could be. Yeah, it's just oats. It's not wild anymore. Right. It's, and they're not sown so much as strategically planted. <laughs> like mm. it's, it seems less like a, you know, just home a, okay. no, <laughs> this is yeah. making babies. He plowed um, a specific field. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically his cousins. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Or maybe his sisters. Oh. They're a little fuzzy on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Cleopatra the fifth. So, yeah, he made children with his sister. Okay. Is the prevailing thought. Uh, the first two, there was Berenice, uh, B-E-R-E-N-I-C-E, she was the fourth, and Cleopatra the seventh. We're jumping from the fifth to the seventh. There's a sixth in there somewhere. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Um, they, so, didn't, they didn't just skip because they don't like even numbers? Right. No, okay. they did not skip uh, because he's the twelfth. Yeah, but maybe the, but Berenice is the fourth. But maybe with Cleopatra's, they maybe skipped one. Maybe also pick a different name. Maybe they also pick a different name. It's like they have like three names. Yeah, it's not great. There's there's fifteen of everybody by the time <laughs> this is done. Um, or just start calling people numbers. I guess. Yeah, I mean that's literally what I was gonna do. <laughs> there's because once we get to Ptolemy the thirteenth, I'm just calling him thirteen because oh, yeah. it's unlucky and he is. Okay. Uh, so the flute, Ptolemy the, flute. the twelfth. That's what we're calling him. The flute. Okay. So the flute begets. <laughs> Cleopatra. Yes. Who will be the only Cleopatra I refer to. Like, that's that's the one this is about. That's okay. the seventh. Cleopatra the seventh is what everybody knows as Cleopatra. If it's a different one, they get a number. Got it. Ha! Take that. Uh, take that, history. Take that, history. That's how we do this. Um, so he marries his sister. <laughs> they have kids. And uh, Berenice and uh, Cleopatra. He doesn't have any sons with them. Oh. Uh, he has uh, three other kids at least. Uh, Ptolemy the 13th. And Ptolemy the Fourteenth, no, and then uh, Arsinoe, uh, the Fourth. Oh, it's a girl. Okay, it's A R S I N O E. It could be pronounced like Arsinoa or Arsinio. It's not Arsinio. She, woo, 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 woo. That's very dated. <laughs> but no, to my understanding, she did not do that. Okay, she did other things, but, but she did you not. don't know but she I didn't. I don't know that she didn't. So very well, there could be. Yep. You know, Arsenio the Fourth. Yep, that's where he got it from. Maybe <laughs> his idea wasn't original. He stole it from ancient yeah. Greek royalty. Yeah, that tracks. Um, or Greek, Greek Egyptian. So Greek Gypsum. Greek Gypsum. I Greek, think is the word. Greek yes. Egyptian. Greek Egyptian royalty. Yep. All right. So uh, otherwise, it's Egyptian. Yeah, I think Greek Egyptian sounds better. <laughs> Slightly. I like it a little better. Otherwise, it sounds like a type of yogurt. <laughs> 
Egurk. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Greek Egyptian. Uh, so Ptolemy the Twelfth is not a great king. Um, he is the illegitimate, illegitimate son of Ptolemy the Eleventh. Nobody knows who his mama was. Who his mama was? Um, Wait, you don't know? How do they not know who his mom was? Because the dad had a harem, probably. Yeah, but the one that the baby comes she, out of is the mom. She was unrecorded. They didn't care. <laughs> oh, okay. She didn't... Uh, I mean, someone knew who the mom was. Just to paint a picture <laughs> of how society worked, the woman who gave birth didn't really matter. Well, wow. Unless you were royalty Yikes. or really wealthy, women are not typically recorded in history. Yeah, hear that, ladies? Yep. How you feel about your life now? Now. <laughs> you Better. Say, yeah. yeah. Better, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, because that's the worst case scenario. Hey, you got to set the bar it's somewhere. It's objectively <laughs> better, but yeah. It's just, but I always do love the, well, women weren't oppressed. Right here. Right yeah. there. Right, that I believe patriarchy is a Greek concept, and it literally means, like, the men sure. run things. Yeah. And that's how it is. Uh, to this point, no woman has solely run Egypt ever. Yet. Yet. Yes, correct. This is about to change really fast, Ooh. too. Uh, so because uh, the flutist, the flautist, the flute, flute player, Ptolemy the flute, sounds like an old school mobster. Sure. <laughs> Not a very good one either. Not a good one. <laughs> Not a good one. Um, he was seen as uh, relatively ineffectual, and because he was illegitimate, Rome who basically saw Egypt as a client state. They weren't officially a client state, but mm. Rome was like, yeah, we could walk in and conquer you. The only reason they haven't is because Rome has a, a book called the Sibylline Texts. A Sibyl is a prophetess. Sibyl, C-Y? Uh, S-Y-B-I-L. A Sibyl is a prophetess, a prophetess or an oracle. And then a Sibylline is, and another L, I-N-E, Sibylline. So the Sibylline text or Sibylline Texts are a series of prophecies written out that the Romans use, like if they're about to make a big decision, they sometimes consult. Oh. They go, oh, this says don't do that. <laughs> One of the prophecies allegedly was don't invade Egypt or bad stuff is going to happen in Rome. Oh. Do not ever send an army to assist an Egyptian king and depose anybody. Oh. This will be bad. Were these specific? Um, um, I believe they were subject to interpretation. Most oracles were uh, really yeah. high on drugs yeah. and just kind of said gibberish. Yeah. And people interpreted that how you want. But a lot of the times you write that down and you go, okay. Yeah. But you, you would have basically a, a series of people, like uh, an entire job created around the concept of reading these and interpreting them. There were orders of priests. You talk to the sibling priests, yep. and they're like, hey, let's consult the oracle. Oh, they said this. This could be interpreted a couple of ways. You know what that sounds like to me? Mm. Big old scam. Big old scam. <laughs> and you know what? You can convince the priests to vote a certain way with a little bit of gold. A little bit of gold. So, sure enough, uh, the Romans in charge at this time are one Gaius Pompey Magnus. Mm who was our very first subject hey, yeah. of our show. And uh, his friend at the time, Gaius Julius Caesar. Hey, I know that guy. We know that guy. And uh, also uh, Marcus Crassus. Marcus Crassus is the richest man in the world oh. at this time. Yeah. Uh, there's that concept, the, the richest Croesus. Mm -hmm. That was a, that was an old thing. And Croesus was like a, a mythical king. But also, rich as Crassus was actually the the term that would work. This guy, it was like he sat on a throne of gold kind of. Like, everything he touched was money. This guy is unbelievably wealthy. Ooh. Like, Jeff Bezos money. Okay. But in Rome. Yeah, yeah. And most of it, hard currency. But he was not a leader of any... I mean, oh, no, 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 he is. Him. At this time, he's part of the first triumvirate. Oh, They're okay. the three most powerful men in Rome. Uh, at this point, so Crassus is coming in hot after crushing the rebellion of Spartacus, the famous slave rebellion where his gladiators training uh, house slaves to fight against the Romans. And, I am Spartacus! The whole thing. Like, yeah. that, was, that was a big deal. So he's very popular now. He basically bought the job. 
He's, they're like, you're not a military man, though. And he's like, no, 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 I am, I am. They're like, yeah, but you did like a couple little military things. Why don't we have Pompey do it? Pompey is a soldier, at least. He's he's off doing pirate hunting and stuff. He's kind of a big deal. He's like, I got this. Okay. Here's money. I'll pay for my own army. He literally pays for his own army, raises it up from nothing, equips everybody, goes and crushes Spartacus, gets hugely famous and more wealthy. Then he takes into his service uh, Julius Caesar. Huh? And that guy becomes his protege, and then they all become buddies with Pompey, and the three of them rule happily ever oh. after, until Crassus decides he's going to invade Parthia, and he dies. Oops. He loses like 30,000 men and Oops. is captured and killed. Whoops. It's really embarrassing. All now the money you, in the world ain't going to help you when yeah. you're dead. So now you just have Caesar and Pompey. They don't like each other okay. as well. Crassus was the glue that bonded them together with money. Yeah. Lots of money. Seems like money's <laughs> the thing that bonded them that was Because that was, yeah. So Caesar's like <laughs> the brains, Pompey's the bronze, and or the brawn, and then uh, Crassus is the coin. Okay. And that's kind of how it all works. They're all pretty intelligent guys. Sure. But Caesar is like on the next level. Um, well, he also gets a ton of money after Crassus dies because he left him a bunch. Oh. He's one of his heirs in his will. And Romans are big on wills. That's very important to them. So now Caesar is in charge with Pompey. And they're both looking at this situation going... And Crassus was the kind of the architect of this. Crassus, before he dies, says, So Ptolemy's dad had a bastard and made him king. So he's illegitimate. So Ptolemy, the king of Egypt, not really sh shouldn't be king. Yeah. We should make it a client state. Oh. And all of Rome is like, like, like torn. Like, yeah, it's a great, like his buddies are like, yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah. But then other people are like, Sibylline texts, yeah, didn't we? don't we, invade. Yeah. And he's like, no, nah, we could do it though. Do the texts really say do that? Do they really <laughs> say it? This is dumb. And then he, start, he and Pompey and Caesar are kind of like, well, we didn't have to invade. We just have to say this is the state of things, and we just treat them like we own them until it becomes fact. Sure. We have the man. It's the Im implication of an invasion, and th that's just always like the, the concept of the Damocles sword. It's just hovering over their head, and at any point, it could drop. <laughs> yeah. we just, we, this is an implied threat. Crassus is huge on implied threats. When you have that kind of money, he's like, yeah, I don't have oh, an yeah. army. But I got 10,000 pieces of gold, and that's the equivalent of 20,000 soldiers, and I only need them for a week. <laughs> and then Strange you're how gone. people with a lot of money can have implied threats. Yep, 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 yep. And this is at a day and age where having a private military is completely acceptable. Oh. Nowadays, that's totally not okay. I mean, people still do, though. Right? <laughs> it should be totally not okay. okay. If people start acquiring soldiers, there's a problem. A guard? Sure. Gotta right. protect your house. Let's see how Soldiers? this. We'll see how this see how video. This we'll see how this video ages in it's, a couple years. Yeah, in a couple years, we're like, so remember when we said that? Mm. Mm, we messed up. <laughs> this video will be taken down. Maybe. We'll find out. <laughs> Who talked about us owning soldiers? <laughs> anyway, uh, but you gotta start small. See, I sure. have my own soldier, my cat. And I just he's a soldier. Yeah. But uh, you build up from there, right? You have your cat soldier, and then eventually you get a human soldier. Yeah. That's why you have kids. You know. <laughs> I don't think starting with cats is the best idea. Ah, uh, well, that's all I've got. Mm. I've got like a Lego soldier. I don't think that counts. Just throw them. It might be more useful than a cat. Yeah. Well, think about it this way: Crassus buys people like we would buy like little Lego people. Yeah, okay. Like that's what Crassus does, and he just has bought all these favors, and nice. that's why he's sitting in power. But he propped up Pompey and Caesar, yeah. which leads to them being men of power. Oh yeah, saying, but also now he's dead. So now he's matter. dead. So power vacuum. But Caesar and Pompey are still like, okay, yeah. So remember when Crassus said we should do this? Yes. We're gonna do this. Nice. So 58 BC comes along. Cleopatra's 11 years old, and Ptolemy goes, okay, I really need to make sure I can keep my kingdom. I'm going to go to Rome and beg. That'll work well, right? He takes a ton of money. Oh, begging with money. And he goes to Caesar and says, please let me keep my kingdom. <laughs> please. <laughs> and Caesar's like, what are you, you going to give me? It's like, all this money. I will take out taxes against it, and I will give you tons and tons and tons of money. And Caesar's like, yeah, that sounds good. I got plans. I got stuff I need to do. Sure, okay. let's do it. Sounds good to me. Perfect. Pompey's fine with it, too. Rome's like, yeah, we like money. Yeah, money. Money well, is, money's like great. This is going to go smoothly. Uh, while he's there, he takes out some loans from prominent Romans, which is something he's been doing. Okay. Um, oh, is he? Yep. Yeah, he's just money. Is he, is he he's, leveraged? He's, he's basically leveraged to the hilt. Oh, boy. It's funny because it's like 
he pays Rome largely with Roman money. Yeah, yeah. But then basically says Romans have the right to tax his people. And that's going to go well. So he's paying... Okay. He's paying the Romans with, with money he doesn't necessarily have. From the but then the Romans get to go and take it from the Egyptian people. Yeah, okay. I'm That's going to go over well. Yeah. That sure. always goes well. Yeah. Uh, so he gets back home. Caesar's like, well, you paid for Egypt, but you didn't pay for Cyprus, hmm. which is a big island. <laughs> sure. And your brother owns it. He's a king there. So since he's a king, you're not the king there. So our agreement only applies to what you are king of, which is Egypt itself. Okay. It doesn't count Judea, because they have a king, King Herod. Uh, it doesn't count Cyprus, because it's your king, Brother Ptolemy. Yep. Another Ptolemy. Their father was super original. <laughs> uh, so Caesar shows up at Cyprus and says, we own you. Oh. That Ptolemy dies. That Ptolemy dies? Yep, that just Ptolemy dies. dies. He just dies. Uh, I believe he dies after standing up to Caesar. So I think he was either poisoned or executed or Conveniently killed. Conveniently dies. He disappeared. <laughs> okay. So he's gone, and Caesar's like, we own Cyprus now! Hey! hey. And, 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 and he's got all that money. And I got a ton of money! So this goes over like a fart in church, because yeah. everybody in Egypt goes, Hey! <laughs> How come we're having to pay to own this and you gave them Cyprus? What is wrong with you? They freak out yeah, at Ptolemy. He comes back thinking like, everything's fine. And they're like, why are you guys mad? What? Are, I just, I'm still the king though. And they're like, yeah, but we have to pay the Romans millions in silver coinage that yeah. we don't have to just stay here. And we don't care who the king is. Because it doesn't impact our lives. So when does he die? Does he die then? <laughs> no. Oh. Different Ptolemy. Oh, the other Ptolemy, Ptolemy died. Uh. There's, there's Ptolemy the Twelfth, and then the, the flute. There's Ptolemy the flute. flute. The flute's still alive. It's alive. But his brother's name is Ptolemy. Yeah. Stup that's just stupid. Okay. So Cyprus died. Ptolemy. Cyprus. He's dead. Okay. He's deposed and he's dead. Got it. Caesar owns Cyprus. Got it. I think he literally is just like, yeah, this is mine now. Yeah. Well. I mean, Rome owns it, but... <laughs> My name's on the deed. Sure. <laughs> Caesar was good at that. <laughs> He's very good at paperwork, and he was a really, really, really good lawyer. Caesar's oh. big thing was knowing the laws intimately. He also wrote a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. yes. And also being an amazing orator. This is a time where you don't have Twitter, you don't have Facebook, you don't have any kind of media. You have to sell the idea yourself. Caesar is the best at it. His mm -hmm. only rival is like Cicero, who's one of the greatest writers of all time, uh, and Cato, who's also a good speaker, but a little belligerent. Pompey is nowhere near as good. He's a soldier. Yeah. Caesar is a soldier and a statesman. Statesman first, though. That's the brilliance uh, of Caesar. Yeah. Is he's, he's good at unifying people who hate each other against other people, and then also getting them to like him. The problem that ever happened with Caesar is he was too liked. Oh, because the people loved Caesar. Oh, okay. Because he knew, just would capture things and give out money. You know what else like Caesar? Knives. Yep. <laughs> He's a, got a magnetic personality. <laughs> the problem is it draws in the knives. <laughs> some 50-some-odd knives. Yeah, you, that's a problem. And that's going to feature into our story. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, the flute gets back. He's not popular. His daughter, Berenice, basically is sitting there like this when he gets home on his throne and says... So the courtiers and I have had a conversation, and you're out, Dad. Oh, no. You suck I as did. being king. And he said, well, but I'm the king, though. She said, no. You lost Cyprus, and now we owe a huge debt to Rome, which we're not going to pay. Forget Rome. Forget you. You're out. Good luck with the flute gigs. <laughs> yeah. Go make your way playing the flute. So Ptolemy <laughs> is kicked out of Alexandria and then basically told, you need to leave or you're going to die. Uh oh So Ptolemy and his loyal daughter... And his flute. Cleopatra, and ostensibly his flute, <laughs> make their way to Rome. Okay. To Rome. To Rome. They go to the city of Rome because he's like, hey, help me get my kingdom back. And then Rome says, Sibylline texts, we can't. Hmm. Sorry. Like, <laughs> we're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Like, half the Senate is, like, really religious about this. Like, no, 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 no. We cannot do this. We're not Even defeated. though... Other people have used this as a threat before. Yeah, They're yeah. kind of the general... This is the more conservative, in the traditional sense of the term conservative. Okay. Not like modern conservative, but actually like just maintaining mm -hmm. the status quo. 
right? So you've got like the the progressive or the the radical branch, and then you have like the regressive. We go back to the old ways, and then you have the conservative party is like established law and established text says no. Yeah. The traditional no, we're not doing that. This made up mumbo jumbo. Then Caesar, <laughs> he's like a more progress not like it progressive in political terms of we're going to change stuff. Things will move forward in my direction. And then he's <laughs> yeah. So he's like, I want to do this, and they're like, yeah. And then the 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 regressive types are like, no, no, we want to go way, way, way back to the old, old, old days. Yeah, yeah. Of uh, a king. <laughs> so those, there's, a, that's a teeny tiny. There's like two of them. <laughs> that's that's super not okay. Yeah. They're like, no, 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 no. The majority of Romans like the way things are in Rome because Rome's the power in the world. Nice. They're awesome. They're like, yeah, we're on top. We're done. I mean, the it majority of Romans are like, this could totally be better. But slaves in other countries are treated way worse <laughs> than we are treated here. In fact, we'd be a slave over there. So I guess being a really poor peasant here is better than a slave over there. Yeah, you can. I mean, kind of like, you know, well, women back then weren't even talked about, and nowadays women still aren't treated like equals. But know, we places. talk about them at least. But we at least get to talk about it, exactly. So, yeah, it's it's all a matter of perspective sure. and extremes, <laughs> right? It's like I'm dirt poor and starving in the street, but at least I'm not dead. And at least I don't have the plague. At least this. So life's rough. At least I don't have the plague. At least I don't have the plague. Although a lot of these guys are like, yeah, I survived it. That's why I don't have it anymore. No, oh, there we go. <laughs> I got the lung capacity of a moth. <laughs> but, yeah. So, you have all of this kind of madness going on. Yes. So here comes Ptolemy back going, so you kicked me out of my house, man. <laughs> Let me back. His wife booted him. Oh. Yeah, so yeah. his wife actually is one of the co-conspirators running things. Cleopatra V is involved in this. She's right. thought to have co-ruled maybe with Berenice. Uh, at some point she's gone and a Cleopatra VI is involved. This could be uh, another daughter that is just not talked about, that was never uh, written about. Uh, um, Tiffany. Yep. <laughs> Or uh, it could be another name for Cleopatra V, and then she just changed her number. There's kind of <laughs> yeah, there's kind of some debate about <laughs> no. who this Cleopatra is. Sure. Okay. It's wonky. She's obviously not too significant. She's though, not super would, significant because right. she's only in it for a little bit. She's yeah. there for about a year, and then Berenice has sole control of Egypt. Okay. Uh, she has uh, a lot of scheming going on with different generals, um, and makes sure that she has sole control over, uh, like, running the city. Um, if you control Alexandria, you kind of control all of Egypt. Yeah. So that's kind of the concept. Kind of, It's their city of Rome. Yeah. That makes um, sense. So she sets up her base of power, and Ptolemy's there. He's, he starts out by living on, like, the outskirts of Rome, and then he slowly, like, moves closer to the capital, like, part. And he, so Was he uh, renting apartments? I, it feels like that. Oh, okay. uh, Pompey likes him, or at least sees him as useful. Before he dies. So he houses him. Okay. Um, and then he pushes the idea that we should help this guy out. So, meanwhile, Pompey being super wealthy and knowing all the wealthy people, he's like, you guys are never going to get your money back from the loans if he's not the king. Ah. And that suddenly changes the Sibylline texts. Oh. Suddenly, like... Oh, crap. Oh, we didn't read the fine print for the Sibylline text. This guy owes us so involved. much money. And if he's not the king, how's he ever going to pay? Well, his daughter will pay us back. And they're like, no, she said she won't. Yeah. But Ptolemy says he will and if what's he, he takes gonna do? it over. What's he going to do? Get a job? Yeah, playing a flute. He's busking <laughs> with his flute at the forum. Yeah, that's not right going to pay. <laughs> Cleopatra dance. <laughs> and she's 11. Yeah. Right now, she's a kid. <laughs> she's not gonna... to pop, pop, watch the princess dance, watch the pharaoh play. Do, 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 do. That ain't gonna pay the interest on those. It's days. not even, not even close. So the Romans suddenly change tack, and they're like, "I maybe this is okay." Okay. So in comes uh, I gotta do this. I, I, Aulus Gabinius. Whoa. Aulus, which is similar to Aulus, it's gold. Uh, this is a very wealthy guy. Uh, in 58 he, uh, BC, he managed to make himself one of the consuls of Rome. That's like a co-president. Yep. There's two of them. Um, and he's, he's, he's like a big mover and shaker. But it, almost everything in his life is achieved through bribes. 
He's been attacked for it publicly. He's been sued for it. He's been put in, like, on trial for it. And they've never caught him. Because he would bribe them. Because he probably would just bribe those people. <laughs> like, he had a lot of money. Sure. Uh, not Crassus money, but a lot of money. Like, maybe one of the wealthiest guys in Rome. Okay. You have to be to be a consul, but he definitely has cash. And it's used it. Money. And he used it. To get out of there. The problem was, he wasn't nearly the speaker or the charmer that other guys who did the exact same thing was. Uh, like, okay. Caesar does the same thing. Sure. But, it's... but he's really likable, and he puts forth policies that largely help uh, the plebeians and some of the poorer patricians. So he's really supported by uh, the what's considered like the lower echelons of people. But then he also rewards all of his friends and he forgives all of his enemies. So Caesar knows how to play the game. Uh, Gabinius does not as well. So Gabinius says, if you pay me, I will make an army and I will give you your crown back. Who's he saying this to? To Ptolemy. Okay. The flute. So the flute says, yes, please, I want that. He can't pay anybody. Yeah, right? (laughs) But he's like, but, so he's got a plan. So he and Gabinius sail back across the Mediterranean to Alexandria with an army. Gabinius brings one. He wants 10,000 talents of gold. A talent is like an ingot. It's a a block of gold, yay big. Okay. So he wants 10,000 of those. (coughs) I don't know, I'm not great at math this much, but this much... That's a talent. That's like 20 pounds. Yeah. That's so 20 times 10,000. So that's like 200,000 200, pounds. pounds. So that's 200 Priuses of gold. Because a Prius is like a ton. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so like think 200 Priuses worth of gold. It's a lot of gold. It's a lot of gold. Yeah. It's a lot of gold. And that's what he wants. Yeah. Uh, and he says, yeah, I'll give it to you. So <laughs> Ptolemy goes back. But you got to take it away yourself. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you have to carry it out. Yeah. <laughs> Only you. <laughs> Take a few trips. Uh, they come back. They successfully reclaim the throne. Uh, because he's a loving father, he has Berenice executed. Oh, well, <laughs> she started it. <laughs> yeah, she did. She did. Uh, then he goes, well, now i got to pay all my debts. Crap. He puts a Roman in charge of debt collection so he can blame the Romans. Okay. And then Gabinius is called back to Rome which he goes back to Rome, and he is immediately put on trial for bribery, breaching the peace, leading an army in violation of the Sibylline text, and they nail him for it. (laughs) So he's... Why'd you go back? He's out of favor. And he's sent into exile. Like, that's the worst you can have done to you, short of killing. Yeah, I was going to say, it could be worse. It It could could be worse. worse That's the second worst thing you can do to a Roman leader. Because he can't run for office ever again. He just lost all this stuff. Anything he had in Rome, gone. You could basically like you get a cart, go over there, take it. But now we're taking all your stuff. Take learn to learn the learn how to play the flute. Yep, yep. It worked really well for Ptolemy. Mm-hmm. He came back and pied pipered the Romans. <laughs> all right. So Cleopatra comes in now uh, as his heir. Ptolemy as the flute's heir. Yes. The flute's like, okay, you were loyal to me, hence Philopater, yeah. father lover. She was loyal. She was faithful. Apparently, during this time in exile, she met a fellow named Mark Antony. Oh, I've heard when of she him. She was fourteen. Uh, nothing happened, mm, sure. but he saw her across the room. It was like, mm, her. she also met Julius Caesar oh. and Gaius Pompey. So she met all these guys. Hey, guys. Hey, uh, fellas. So that's in 55 BC. So they were in exile for three years. Um, so she's learning all this stuff. Uh, in uh, 52 BC, he makes Cleopatra his co-regent and heir, which is awesome. And then he dies in 51 and says, uh, baby Ptolemy, the 13th, he will be co-regent with you. You guys will get married and all that jazz. He's 11. He's 11. The He's baby 11. Ptolemy. The baby is 11. 11. So, and she is uh, older than 14. Older than 14. She's born in uh, 69, so she's like 15? <laughs> Maybe 16? Uh, so she's young. Yeah. But she's really smart. The problem is she now runs the kingdom, and she finds herself inheriting a debt of 17.5 million drachma. Drachma is a silver coin. How are they in debt? Because of the debts he took out. Oh. So Ptolemy, all the things he owed, now she inherits. Thanks. She yeah. also now has Gabinius's army stayed behind to collect the debts, but they have no leader and he's been exiled. So you have a bunch of unemployed mercenaries walking around town. 
this does not go well. No. They just beat people up and take their money. And don't send it forward. And they don't send it forward. They just keep it. Yeah, it's not how the system's going to work at all. It's not great. Uh, So she has to handle this Gibinian problem. This is what they call them, the Gibinians. Gibinians. They become like a mercenary force because they still have like kind of a, a structure like a rank structure, yeah. but they're basically a gang of thousands of... We're still doing our job, people. lady. Yeah, but not for you. But not for you. Now so we're just doing it. Imagine you took a, a legion of soldiers, so that's like 4,000 dudes, put them in a city and then said, okay, our leader's gone. Mm. And then you don't give them any orders. And then they don't answer to anybody in that city. That's what's going on. Well, we do it for the love of the job. Yep, which is apparently just beating people up and stabbing folks. you got to love your do. work. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you love your work, you'll yeah. never work. If that's you love right. what you do, you'll never work, that's and right. they love what they do. Because it's basically like, well, we just want to sit around and drink, uh, and the way we do that is we stab people and take their stuff. And that's I mean, we, you know, if you're on the right end of the sword, that's not a bad it's plan. It's not a bad plan, <laughs> yeah. So this is a serious issue. She starts to take control of it. She starts to organize it so that we can they can repay their debts. Uh, she uh, immediately starts paying respect to traditional Egyptian gods. Um, she sends out envoys to different leaders and different rulers around the area. She becomes friends with King Herod in Judea. Um, she's doing all this stuff, but this causes a problem because she's basically the queen yeah. as opposed to the co-ruler. This does not sit well with Ptolemy's regent. So Ptolemy is a kid. He's given a regent, somebody to help him run things. His name is Pothinus, or Pothinus, P-O-T-H-I-N-U-S. He is uh, the regent, he's the main advisor, and he's a eunuch. So, snip, snip. He is unique. He is not unique. Oh. Well, he, there are a bunch of eunuchs. It's apparently a common thing. Probably <laughs> to keep you away from Pharaoh's daughter. Sure, well, that would do it. Yeah, because you're not motivated by that. However, he is power motivated. He mm. sees Cleopatra as a threat to Ptolemy, ergo, threat to his power. So he starts to convince Ptolemy she's a bad egg. Okay. She's taking the power. Look, she's on the money. You're not on the money. She's in all these records. You're not in the records. And what's more likely is, well, well, there's there's two probabilities. This kid is incompetent in a child, and Cleopatra has earned her right to rule the thing, so P- that's what she this does. This is Ptolemy the kid. Yes, yes. So now 13th? we're on the 13th. Right. 13th. Tal- well, now we're on Ptolemy. Yeah. Okay, we're on Ptolemy. So Ptolemy, baby Ptolemy, yep. baby T, baby P, technically, he is... What is likely happening is Cleopatra sees this as her chance to shine, take over, take control. She could be a queen. She is by rights a queen. She has worked for this. She has earned this, and she is not going to have some freaking baby run things. She's definitely not going to have some stupid eunuch run things who has no authority whatsoever. Now, Ptolemy has this will that says, my children will co-rule King Ptolemy, the first one. The The flute. The The flute, flute, sorry. The flute had written a will, and he left it with Pompey because he's like, this guy's a general, he'll protect it. Sure. No problems. He'll read this. Unfortunately, back in Rome, there are problems. Oh. Ptolemy and Caesar have had a falling out. There is now a civil war. It does not go well for Pompey. At uh, the Battle of Pharsalus, uh, Pompey and Caesar fight, and it's the end of Pompey's rule. He's set into exile with a few guys on a boat, basically. At the same time, Baby Ptolemy yep. has been convinced by Pythinus to get rid of his sister, so he exiles her. They have a whole civil war, and it starts brewing basically from, I mean, this is building up and building up. Where does he exile her to? Just out of Alexandria. Just She's, not allowed. Okay. She's not allowed in there, and he will kill her if she comes back. She eventually goes to Syria. Okay. Um, I think that's where she stays for a while, but she kind of bounced around. You had to stay mobile. Hmm. Um, I don't know where you go in here, exiled. Meanwhile... Ptolemy's like, oh, I'm not allowed in the Judea. I'm not allowed in Rome. I'll go to Egypt. I got friends there. Oh, okay. My guys helped Ptolemy take the throne. Yeah. The flute owes me. You guys kids love owe me. They love me. Yeah. So he gets there. Do they love And him? as he gets on the beach to hug him, because he recognizes the soldier, the soldier stabs him and decapitates him in front of his wife and children. Yikes, I guess the love isn't as strong as he thought That's it was. so much. So this goes back to our very first episode, the death of Pompey Magnus. Yeah. He is murdered because baby Ptolemy is told by his eunuch, yeah, this is a good idea. This will ingratiate us with Caesar. It does not. Whoops. <laughs> Caesar flips out. Yeah. While he and Pompey were political enemies, he always said p- that Pompey was his friend. This could be legitimate, but is definitely a political thing, too. Yeah. Because if he's 
welcoming and, and friendly to him in defeat, he wins over the people because they see him as not being a tyrant, and he potentially wins an sure. ally into his good graces. Caesar is nothing if not the smartest politician in the room about all these things. Um, and regardless, you don't kill someone without checking. You don't Caesar. check. And also, there's this, it's, it's again done really brilliantly in the TV series Rome, when they, they show Caesar the head. That's how he finds out. Hey. They're just like, here's his head. And he freaks out and says he was a consul of Rome, which yeah. is like a sacred position. This is like, this is assassinating a president. This is murdering a Yikes. king. And it's his friend. His political rival, but they were friends. For they, He knows the guy his whole life. Boy, that'd be embarrassing for the guy with the head on yeah. the ladder. And yeah, it's basically like Pathinus well, holding then, it like, yeah, and he's like, I oh. I guess I'll just. <laughs> oh. okay. So Caesar sees what's going on. He knows that the eunuch's running things. He doesn't like it. He has him seized and knifed to death. Yikes. Well, that's how you do um, After he, he basically takes control of the, the palace of Alexandria. And he's like, I'm in charge now. You people are awful. You murdered a consul, and this is a affront to all of Rome. The problem is he only brought half allegiance. That's like 2,000 guys. Well, he was baby, in a rush, I Baby bet. Ptolemy has an army of 20,000 men, including the Gabinians, who are a bunch of psycho knife men. Oh. On top of this, Arsino, or Arsenio, we're not really sure, the fourth, has decided she wants to be queen. She Everyone sees a chance for her and Ptolemy to rule and Cleopatra's on the outs. So she gathers her troops and they all surround Caesar. At some point during this, Cleopatra infiltrates the palace to plead her case to Caesar. Because again, she's very smart. She knows Caesar's mad and having him, who's the most powerful man in Rome and therefore potentially the world, as her friend, mm. or better, mm. he'll secure her rights as queen. Now there's a, a myth that she was rolled up in a bedspread or a rug and carried in and unrolled in front of Caesar, and there's this beauty. Um, what's more likely is... <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey. yeah. Wow, wow. She, that thing <laughs> be rolling that much. It's my crown on straight. <laughs> Her wig's all messed up. She, hold on, give me a minute. But whatever did happen is she was able to infiltrate the castle, which was surrounded by... Mm -hmm. uh, it was fortified and guarded by Caesar's men and surrounded by Ptolemy's army. Mm, okay. But she gets in there. Somehow. Um, it's described, though, that she was, like, dressed spent like a queen. Yeah. And she wowed Caesar. He's like, I remember when you were a kid. Hey, hey lady. Crap, you are. Wow. Hi. Hello. Nice to meet you. And she dazzles him with how smart she is okay. uh, and her case. And then <laughs> Caesar finds out that Ptolemy is causing all these problems he had stolen the will. Who did? Baby Ptolemy. Stole the will? Stole the will that Pompey had. One of the things Pompey kept him during campaign mm -hmm. was the flutist's, the flautist's will that said Caesar, Cleopatra and baby, baby Ptolemy were supposed to co-rule. Yeah. And he's just like, you told me she wasn't supposed to be in charge. This is Ptolemy's will. It's signed by Mag Pompey. It was held by Pompey. And you <laughs> killed him, and you took this, and then you said it didn't happen. That's not going to go He's well. He's really mad yeah. and basically demands baby Ptolemy disband his army. This fight is over. Well, baby Ptolemy and Arsinoe don't believe in this. And they decide to besiege Caesar in the palace. Mm, boy. It takes them a, for a year, this goes on. Caesar winds up burning down a fleet, uh, which burns the Library of Alexandria, which no. every book lover in his, like throughout the world is still kind of mad about that Does one. Caesar did that? Caesar did it. It wasn't on purpose. He, burned, he tried to burn the fleets so that he couldn't be surrounded. <laughs> it wasn't on purpose. And then it spread. Now, who knew bo books were so flammable? Yeah, yeah they, you should have put the books away from the harbor. That's what I say. Run away from the fire. Yeah. So apparently that's one of the things. Caesar's blamed for it. Ptolemy might have done it. Nobody's really sure exactly what went down. History. Yep. But yeah. So the light that the library burns. Everybody's mad, understandably. No good. Caesar's eventually uh, saved by a relief army from Rome, uh, and his friend Mithridates, who's a king, um, I think from around Syria. He's not a Parthian, but he's, he's a potent leader. They show up, beat the snot out of Ptolemy. Ptolemy tries to escape down the Nile, and his boat capsizes, and he drowns. Nope. Dead baby Ptolemy. Nope, sorry. Dead baby. Dead baby. Ptolemy. He's... Mm, I mean, he's not a baby baby. 
but he's like 13. He's a baby. Oh, okay. He's he's a he's a kid. Um, now during this, true learn how to swim. Yeah, he should have. Uh, sometime during this, uh, between Pompey dying on the 29th of September in 48 BC, and Caesar showing up, somehow magically during this time, Cleopatra is seen less and less in public. And because. on June 23rd, she comes out holding a baby. Oh, that old. Caesarian. Mm. Caesar's child. Who is married? Caesar's married. But yep. hey, he's Julius Caesar. Hey, she do? has this baby. Um, so. <laughs> and she's what? 15, 16, 17? Well, this, now? Is, this is in 47, so she is 18. Oh no no wait, wait hold on let me let me do this math again oh sorry she is uh, twenty one or twenty two okay sorry I did the math I did I, I added it in yep that's a BC thing BC yeah. thing inverted so she's in her twenties Caesar's you know he's like forty five or fifty I think mm. it's not that this is fine at the time uh, well, there's plenty more to judge them on yep 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 <laughs> uh, so Caesar has broken the siege he hangs around for a bit. Tours the countryside, eventually goes back home. Cleopatra is now the sole ruler. Uh, with, well, but she has a baby brother again, Ptolemy the Fourteenth. Uh, baby, baby Ptolemy. Another. Uh, He's like five. Okay. He's very little. He is just a little fat baby. Does he does not know anything. He is just he's just Stupid there. Stupid baby. He's just there. Yeah. Uh, I believe they're they're married symbolically. Um. What's also really cool about Cleopatra, and this is she's the only one who did this, she speaks Egyptian fluently. She's the only Ptolemaic ruler to bother to learn to Egyptian. learn the freaking language of her country. Yeah, well. So uh, all these people who tried to say like, well, she was just a whore and she just slept around. No, no, no. She used what she had, which was at the time her body, to ingratiate herself with Caesar, yep. which is brilliant because he's the most powerful man in the world. But also, she had the brains to learn the local language. She had the duty to follow her father and stay loyal to him. She had the wherewithal to survive multiple assassination attempts and a civil war with her own flesh and blood who really wanted to murder her in the most awful way possible. Um, probably publicly. There were lots of threats made about that kind of a thing. And she bore through it, and now she is the queen. Um, now, she visits Rome in 46 B.C., Visits is a very long term thing. She is there for like two years. Okay. Um, More like moves in. I she guess. has like she's she's there to basically be seen. She's the ruler of Egypt. She doesn't want Egypt to be forgotten about and then just made into a province. Yeah. And Caesar publicly names her a friend and ally of Rome, not a servant. Okay. So he recognizes that they're their own sovereign state. That's huge. Uh, it does basically make them like a client state of Rome, but they can still run their own stuff. Okay. While she's there, Mark Antony really starts to notice her. Ooh, Mark Antony. He's like, holy... Hubba hubba. Now, he's married too. Sure. Well, that doesn't seem to stop anybody. Yep. Doesn't seem to stop anyone. <laughs> now, unfortunately, while she's there, around rolls the 15th of March... 44 BC, which is known historically as the Ides of March. Oh, yeah. Julius Caesar goes to the Senate, where he is thought to maybe be proclaimed uh, king. What a lovely day. dictator for life. It's a glorious, beautiful this day. This will be fun. And <laughs> he is proceeded to be stabbed by like 40 <laughs> members <laughs> of the Senate. <laughs> Only three of the wounds were enough to mortally wound well, him. All you so needed everything, one. But all you needed <laughs> was one. So that just shows like they were really nervous about stabbing him. <laughs> I guess. If he'd had like two bodyguards... Antony wasn't there. Strange. If Mark Antony had been there, it might not have gone down like that. Okay. If Antony, because he was like fanatically loyal to Caesar. Caesar dies, and Cleopatra sticks around to re see the reading of the will. Because she has a son with him. And she might be in the will. She might be in the will. And this is a will like no other. This is the wealthiest, most powerful man in Rome right now. Yeah. So this this is like when Crassus's will was read, and she's a big believer in wills because that's what got her her throne, right? Yeah. Like so, she's had some issues with this. It's read, and Caesarian isn't even mentioned. 
Ooh, Mark Antony gets a little bit, so he's kind of miffed. And Octavian, Caesar's grandnephew, is pronounced his, uh, and also like his godson, is pronounced his son and heir. Oh. And basically becomes Caesar. Uh, From then on, Octavian starts referring to Caesar as his father. And eventually Octavian becomes Augustus, yeah. the first emperor of Rome. Before that, though, he creates what's called the Second Triumvirate. Well, he doesn't create it by himself. He creates it with Mark Antony and Marcus Lepidus, who's yes. kind of thrown in <laughs> as, like, the, the balance, but it's because he's kind of feckless and he doesn't do anything. Yeah. But he's not ambitious. He's well, just kind of there. You need someone there to break the ties. Right. And he, he's... Lepidus is lucky because... During all the power struggles, they basically, at, at one point, Antony and Octavian are coming to loggerheads. They're going to kill each other. And they're basically, and, and Lepidus is just sitting in the back, like, mm, good. And they, they basically say, you can retire now. And he's like, thank you. <laughs> and he just leaves. Wow. He just leaves. He goes and retires to a province out of the way where he will not be murdered. Well, good for you, Lepidus. And he doesn't make any big plans to do a comeback. He's just like, I'm out. I'll take my money and run. I think he made the right He's choice. One of the smartest guys in Rome in yeah. history, honestly. Because mm -hmm. like all these other guys, you have these great schemes. And you're like, oh yeah, these guys are legends. But Marcus yep. Lepidus lives. There we go. Good job, Marcus <laughs> Lepidus. He gets out of it. Uh, Cicero <laughs> does not. Uh -oh. He mouths off to Antony during oh, the, yeah. this whole thing. And Mark Antony has his hands cut off and nailed to the walls of the Senate House. <laughs> and, I mean, when Cicero lays into him, he lays into him. Oh, he's the big or order. Yep. yep. He writes a whole thing, and then he has it published. And everyone's like, and then like read in the forum. And then Antony hears about it. He's like, so there's this whole power struggle. Uh, Octavian and Antony bang heads a few times. Um, also during this, at some point, he goes to visit uh, in uh, 41 BC, he goes to visit Cleopatra. And then nine months later, she's got two kids. Huh. Two. Twinsies. Twins. Oh, there you go. Uh, and I think it's Celine and Helios, which is like, I think mm. Celine is like night and day. It's like night and day. It's, it's oh, supposed, nice. Helios is about, the, it's a sun god. So it's all about like, our kids are, are awesome. So she's got two with Antony. She's got one with Caesar. So she's, she's smart. She, she's seducing, not, <laughs> right, right. it's a mutual thing. She's young, she's attractive. Antony's like, uh, girl. <laughs> Even because he doesn't care about his wife back home. Apparently not. Uh, when his wife dies, though, Octavian sees an opportunity. We're going to bury the hatchet, and we're going to be fine. You're going to marry my sister. It's a power broker thing. Okay. To prevent further scuffles and potential war. Antony is the infinitely superior general, but uh, Octavian has this guy, Agrippa, that's helping him out. So they... They're beaten against each other, and then they're just like, well, we're going to end this fighting. You're going to marry Octavia. Eventually, though, Mark Antony goes into Parthia to try to make up for what Crassus did, loses worse, and then he gets embarrassed, and then divorces Octavia and goes and marries Cleopatra. Oh, that's what he wanted to do in the that's first place. That's what he wanted to do in the first place. Things just keep getting worse and worse for there. Cleopatra kind of tied herself to the wrong guy. Whoops. Now... At some point during all of this craziness, um, Cleopatra <laughs> decides she doesn't want her baby brother around and poisons him. Oh. Sorry. Well, he is poisoned. Sorry, baby brother. But she probably did it. Okay. Uh, and then she elevates then. her son Caesarion uh, to her co-ruler on the 2nd of September in 44 BC. So basically she finds out, well, my son's not getting anything, so I need to secure his legacy. Ah. Boom. I'll kill my brother. Now you're a king. There we go. That makes sense. That was easy. It's a real. It's Occam's razor. It's a straight line. Cotton. Uh, Occam's razor. That's the razor you use to slit your brother's throat. That is I think not. That's, that's not true. But that's, that's not true. Yes. Uh, but now she and she and Antony are locked together. I I think they get married. Okay. It's, they and they become co-rulers. Things go on and on, back and forth with all of this craziness. Um, the Parthian campaign was in 36 BC. Mark Antony keeps thinking he wants to do it again and again. Cleopatra's like, this is a dumb idea. Right. Octavian pulls a really jerk move, and he sends his sister, Antony's wife, with 2,000 men. Like, heard what happened to your army. Here's my sister with some guys. Oh, heard you needed man. some guys because yours are all dead. <laughs> Antony yeah. takes this personally, gets really, really mad. Yeah. And then the civil war breaks out between them. Oh, okay. Well, that didn't Antony help. again. Better general, usually, 
But Octavian has Agrippa, who's a really, really good general and younger and smarter. And so he Octavian, spent 2,000 guys just as like a... F you. Yep, yep. He just, like, you want some guys? And Anthony's like, oh. no, I don't want the guys. And take your whore wife, sister, back with, nah. Octavian. They had thinks, a suck for those guys. Yeah, well, they don't <laughs> die. They just, like, send them. I know, but they yeah, still had to go on this big they journey. March, and they got to march back. This is ha, 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 But at least we're funny. not in the war. We're the ones this is part march. of a joke. This is <laughs> stupid. I thought we were going to go fight the Parthians. I'm glad we're not fighting the Parthians. They're terrifying. Because <laughs> um, the Parthians are all, like, heavy, heavy cavalry. And the Romans are like, can you come closer? No! <laughs> Dead. Uh, plus, the greatest generals in their time have all died. So they don't want to do this. Uh, so now Antony and Octavian, they never get on ever again. The war gets worse and worse. At the Battle of Actium between Antony's forces and uh, Octavian's, his fleet is smashed. His flagship sinks. He has to swim to Cleopatra's ship. Uh, and then they run away. Um during all of the kerfuffle and eventually the besieging of Alexandria and all of these attacks, uh, Antony thinks that Cleopatra has died. He's been told that she died. Um, he kills himself. Uh, he's by suicide. He falls on his sword. Yep. Uh, kills himself by suicide. I seriously say that. Sorry, but yeah, he. the traditional thing, it, the Romans are very much kind of like the samurai. Uh, if you dishonored or you, you're going to be defeated, you kill yourself with a sword. Okay. Uh, he dies. Cleopatra is obviously very sad. Uh, and she plans to... How did he hear that she was dead? Uh, one of the versions is that while she was hiding away, she had one of her servants tell him that he, she died. Oh. The reasoning maybe isn't to get him... It wasn't like to get him to commit suicide, although he has Oops. attempted it before. Uh. He had to be stopped once, because he's like, well, my friends betrayed me. Like, my allies didn't come to help. I killed myself. Ah! He's very dramatic. Okay, well. It's like once Caesar died, he got really, really dramatic. Uh, and... Maybe it was to try to get her some leniency. Antony's dead. You don't have to kill us all. Okay. But she, meanwhile, goes into her, uh, like, treasury and plans to burn herself alive with all of her possessions. Final F you <laughs> to do the it. Roman emperor. Sure. Uh, there's a, one of the stories is that Antony is brought to her while he's mortally wounded and dying from his own sword wound. And he's like, trust this guy. He'll take care of you. But that guy ends up sneaking into the treasury, kidnapping her, and bringing her before nope. Octavian. Regardless of how that happens, that guy, the, the, uh, she ends up captured and brought to Octavian. Okay. And Octavian's like, I'm going to bring you to Rome. And she says, I will not be part of your triumph. Because typically what Roman leaders did is they dragged their defeated enemies yeah. through the streets of Rome and people yelled at them and made fun of them yeah. while they're in chains, beaten down. It's a really good thing. really helped people. So she refuses to do that. And during her reign at some point, she was testing poisons oh, just, on yeah. prisoners, but sometimes servants. Just test them out. Allegedly. Okay. Again, this is written by the people who won, yeah. so they might have written these things off. Uh, she eventually goes you know, into her palace and she takes a poison right back. and she dies. Rather than be brought forward. Yeah. Uh, Caesarian ends up going into hiding, but it's thought that he was captured and killed. It's not confirmed that Caesarian was ever actually for sure found. Oh. But of course Octavian would say, yeah, we got him and he's dead. Yeah. He never shows up again in history after he leaves. Well, he it's thought that he went to India, but then the king of India sent him back. Okay. Oh yeah, the Romans will be nice to you now. Octavian's told like, no, no, no. There's only room for one Caesar. He turns... Egypt into a Roman province. But what's interesting about Cleopatra is during her time as queen, she gets Cyprus back as an Egyptian state. Oh. She gets like a dozen other territories back. She like doubles the size of Egypt. Good and job. She Cleo. does a hugely, uh, it's a really impressive job she does. But because of the conflict with the Romans that she gets pulled into, because she helped them like during their wars to like avenge Caesar's death. She did all of this stuff. She did what she was supposed to do. Yeah. But because of Antony's failures and her attachment to him, it led to her own destruction. Oops. So there's this woman that is vilified as this monster, this, this whore, this, all these horrible words. But really what she did is she, this was a very intelligent woman who was living in a time where women had no power, no authority. They were chattel to be passed around uh, just to gain titles. And she took control of the situation, ended up with the right guys to protect herself, to protect her children, to protect her kingdom, and then unfortunately got tied to a guy who went through failure after failure and brought her down with him. Eey. So 
she's a very complex character, but she's not this, you know, yeah, yeah, monstrous seducer of, of great men and all this stuff. It seems to be the way of all women in history that they're pre- yep. the way they are portrayed is not necessarily the way they are. Yeah, yeah, she's definitely vilified as this like, and and it's unfortunate too because like while she was this beautiful person who did have children with. Antony and, and Caesar, and they were married. Bear in mind, these guys did those things, too. And uh, at the same time, though, she managed to help pay off the debts that her father had incurred. She stayed loyal to him. She bothered to learn the language. She did a lot of rebuilding projects. She commemorated a lot of statues and temples for her people. She helped uh, handle famine and drought at the same time. She was great at diplomacy but it all collapsed because of the stuff that was going on with Rome. It'd be really interesting to see what would or could have happened if she had just been able to rule independently. Because from all signs, it looks like she would have had a really, really long and healthy reign. It's really unfortunate. But yep. that's that's the story of Cleopatra, the seventh Philopater, the father lover. The story of Cleopatra. Cleopatra. That's it. Well, thanks, I went, Will. I went a bit over. Just Sorry. a little not bad. Not too bad. Good job. Yeah. All right, well, uh, if we have any uh, corrections or additions, feel free to throw that in the comment. Yeah, and obviously uh, this is a lot of stuff crammed into the... the yeah, well, I'm sure we'll touch on to uh, her exploits uh, another time as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. She pops up every... So- she's tied to a lot of major events in Rome. Mm, there you go. Uh, so, uh, that's this week in history. Yep. Next week we'll be discussing uh, the fall of the Roman Empire, yep. but specifically the end of the fall of the Roman yep. Empire. Specific... Uh, Replacement of their last, it was the last Roman emperor. There we gets go. To post. So, yeah, that's, so it's, we gotta, it's, it'll be like almost a one year sign mm. since we started with a major Roman event and mm. then we're gonna end the year with uh, nice. a big Roman event. I forget when we started this. No? Right. September 29th was uh, uh, Pompey's death. So, oh, there we that go. week <laughs> in history. We have to start looking up for different things in history. Yeah, now we get to go back. I get to go back through and go, what was idea number two for this week? (laughs) So tune in next week for the Fall of Rome. Uh, That's uh, Mike and Will, This Week in History. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.